Right now, Artemis 1 is racing to the moon after an overnight launch from Kennedy Space Center. This is a test flight with new technology, no crew on board. The mission is scheduled to last 25 days with Artemis circling the moon twice and returning to Earth with a splashdown off the coast of San Diego. What NASA learns from this mission will help get astronauts back on the lunar surface, perhaps within three years, and after that, Mars. Uh oh, okay, so get this. Those future astronauts might be wearing space suits created not too far from where we're standing right now. Yeah, about three hours away in Delaware, the seamstresses there are stitching together those new suits. And tonight, they're giving Evan Kosloff exclusive access as they test them out. I'm just sewing down this like a quarter of an inch. Emily Hearing has loved sewing since she was 17. It's like a dance. You and the machine are dancing together. It's a much more delicate art than what you would think it is. But this seamstress isn't just making blue jeans. She's actually working on something a bit more out of this world. It's really cool to tell people that I get to work on spacesuits. Yeah, she worked for a company that makes NASA's spacesuits, one stitch at a time. Like, actually, it's really cool. The company is called ILC Dover and has been making NASA suits for more than 50 years. And no doubt the stakes are pretty high. If something happens out in an atmosphere that's uncontrolled, you're talking about an astronaut's life. Helmet on and locked. That's why they test. Not a lot of scratching your nose in a space suit. Luke Marshall is putting on the suit to make sure that this suit is space ready. Go ahead and do the handrail grabs. Today he's being led by engineer Peter Vanderclay, who says they test routine motions hundreds of times to make sure that the suit can hold up in space. There's a lot of wearing and tearing that happens, and we want to make sure that the materials can survive the length of the suit or glove life. And this testing is hard work because all of this gear put together is about 300 pounds. And unlike the astronauts, ugh, we have to deal with gravity. Uh, like a big, heavy metal coat. <laughs> with the helmet now off, Luke told us why this work matters to him. You think about it every day, you're like, I have to get these reps because you don't want that going up if it's not safe. I was 13 when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Bill Airy is the quality manager and the company's historian. There were times where I'd literally fall asleep in the suit. He's also spent hundreds of hours testing suits. With that helmet on, you can't hear anything, so it's like being in a big bubble. Bill says the company suits have been used in more than 250 space flights, including six moon landings. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. If you think about it, there's that, that famous picture of Buzz Aldrin on the moon, right? And it's such a famous picture. And, and yet it was built right here in that outer layer that you see, that whole part of that suit was built right here in Frederica, Delaware. A small town company with an extraterrestrial reach, with their walls now filled with letters from thankful astronauts. Here's a good one here. This is Jim Lovell to the gals of Frederica. Thank you for sewing straight and careful. I would hate to have a tear in my pants on the moon. And so the dance continues as suits are being made for the next generation of space travel. Reporting in Frederica, I'm Evan Kozloff, WUSA 9.